dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. Welcome to this homily on this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. What do you want and how much are you willing to pay? These two questions and their answers come up in today's readings. What do you want and how much are you willing to pay? And we find three people in the reading saying, I want only you, O Lord and I am willing to pay all I have. What determines the price we are ready to pay for something? It is a value we ascribe to it. We are willing to pay more if we consider that thing of more value, just like we are happy to make any amount of sacrifice for somebody we really love. So the real litmus test to know if something or someone is valuable to us is to see what we are prepared to happily sacrifice for it, for that person. For example, think of what we are willing to sacrifice for our family, for our career, our name, for money, etc. And that determines how much value we give them. When today's readings ask us how much value do we give to the kingdom of God, it also asks us to determine how much we will be happy to sacrifice for it. King Solomon in the first reading sacrifices everything else, like all material prosperity, victory of his enemies, long life, etc., to obtain wisdom from God. And the two people in the parables about the kingdom of God are willing to sell everything they have in order to get what they consider of great value. So the first message we get therefore is that God and his kingdom must be of more value, more worth than anything else for us. And hence, we must give him the first priority in our lives. Take the story of the great King Solomon in the first reading, which is from the first book of Kings. Pleased with his great devotion, the Lord God appeared to him and asked what favor he wanted him to grant. King Solomon could have asked for anything, but instead he asked for one thing. Lord, give me an understanding heart to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. 1 Kings 3.8 This request of Solomon was much more than a prayer for wisdom. It was an acknowledgement of the sovereignty of God. Because from the beginning, God had made it clear that judging between good and evil was his prerogative, his right. We read in the book of Genesis chapter 2, where God commands Adam and Eve, Do not eat the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Genesis 2.17 And Bible scholars say, that the tree of good and evil is a symbol, meaning that God alone can decide what is right and wrong, not human beings. We have no authority to decide what is good and what is bad, but only to accept what God has prescribed. And in verse 5, there Satan tells Eve, when you eat of it, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when man did not accept the judgment of God, his sovereignty as the author of everything. They started sin, death, disaster, and every evil. And we continue all the more the same today. When today's society emphasizes our power to make decisions on what is right, what is wrong, what is bad and what is good, what is moral and what is immoral, rejecting God's instructions. So. When Solomon asked for wisdom to discern between good and evil, he was in fact returning to God the power to decide his course of action, asking God to take decisions for him. And this is of utmost importance, to give God the control of our lives, our decisions, our actions. And the same attitude we find in the two parables in the Gospel the man who found a treasure and hid it, and in the merchant who found a pearl of great value. For them also, what they had was not important, but what they found. Yes, God is to be given 
a central place in our lives secondly all the three tell us that there is a price to be paid if we really want to possess what is important what's of great value and here the kingdom of god solomon could have asked for anything but he sacrificed every material prosperity for god and his rule in his life and think of the man who found the treasure in the first parable he sells everything to buy the field now interestingly why did he buy the whole field instead of secretly possessing the treasure for he only had found it and nobody else of course according to the jewish laws of the time the treasure belonged to the owner of the field but jesus concern was not the law he wanted to make it clear that the kingdom of heaven cannot be stolen you must pay the price for it otherwise it is not yours and you will not enjoy it often people think it is easy to be a member of the church of a religious community to be a priest etc and never think of the price it demands but only the rights they hardly think that there is nothing called a free lunch even in the case of the kingdom of heaven that is why the question comes back what price are you willing to pay in the second parable the merchant in search of fine pearls finds one and we read he sells everything and buys it this is a weird behavior that he sells everything to buy a pearl now where will he stay what will he eat what will he wear when he is hungry he cannot eat the pearl and he cannot tell them tell the people oh don't worry i have this beautiful pearl the people will surely say that he is crazy and will ridicule him a new testament scholar brand peter thinks that this exactly is the point of the parable sometimes you need to look foolish or crazy for the kingdom of god and if you consider the gospel of such great value you will be happy to do that it all depends on how much you love it you value it but we want our religion our faith to be moderate to be reasonable or to be neutral we don't want to be embarrassed for the gospel but when saint francis of assisi abandoned the great fortunes he had as a son of a very rich and successful merchant in assisi and when he set out to follow jesus as a poor man or when saint mother teresa of calcutta renounced the safety of her convent and went out to the slums of calcutta with just 5 Indian rupees in her hand many thought they were crazy senseless but that craziness foolishness is what the lord sometimes desire from his people he makes use of such people who are crazy for the kingdom of god thirdly there is a great joy in the sacrifice we make for those we love the parable reads the man joyfully goes and sells all he has the sacrifice required was not out of obligation or done grudgingly but one made out of joy our joy in possessing the company of the lord of the membership of the church of our families they result in our willingness to sacrifice anything we have our talents our time and resources this is the joy of the gospel the evangeli gaudi that pope francis always speak about this joy of sacrifice is what saint paul expresses in his letter to the philippians when he says whatever gain i had i counted as loss for the sake of christ indeed i count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing christ jesus my lord for his sake i have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that i may gain christ philippians 3:7 and 8 where there is love there is joyful sacrifice otherwise there will only be grudge and anger and sorrow god loves a cheerful giver says saint paul 2 corinthians 9:7 and fourthly when we are invited to possess the best don't settle for the lesser good but for the highest good the summum bonum 
which is Jesus himself and his kingdom. But unfortunately, so many settle for the lesser goods of money, of wealth, of pressure, of power. They are all good, but not worth compared to what we are invited to possess. In this sense, the kingdom of heaven is a package. You will not find true joy. You will not be a successful disciple if you hold part of your life back from God's reign. God must totally reign your life. Your commitment must be total. Why do you think so many marriages fail today? Why so many religious and priests don't find their lives happy and fulfilling? Why there are so many unhappy Christians today grudging and grumbling about the church? There is only one reason. A total commitment is missing, but only a partial one. And without making such a complete commitment, they blame the church, others, for the lack of happiness in their Christian, religious, or priestly life. Last week, one person came to me asking for a letter from the church, stating that he is leaving the Catholic Church. It was my first experience. So I told him, sir, please don't feel offended, but may I know why? And he said, I have been part of the church for so many years, but I don't see much value in it, especially I don't feel inspired by those on top. And I said to myself, this is interesting. Is he not the one who had to inspire others? If he had found Jesus of great value, and this is what many think, that others are the reason why they cannot experience the love of God. The truth is that they are unwilling to pay the price. And this explains why for millions, the kingdom of heaven is not a reality in their lives. They think the church is for others, not for me, because they don't realize the value of possessing Jesus and his kingdom, but only think of the sacrifice one needs to make. So dear sisters and brothers, the kingdom of heaven is given for free, but to take it, we need to empty our hands. We are holding too many things in our hands and to try to take the kingdom without leaving what is in our hands, without sacrificing what we have. And what is demanded from us is a joyful sacrifice. The question remains, my son, my daughter, what do you want? And how much are you willing to pay? And we should be able to say, my Lord, I want only you. And I'm willing to pay everything I have for you and your kingdom. May he bless all of us. Amen.